today. What's good, y'all? Hitmaker, what's good, baby? Oh, man, he want to get on early. He said, let's talk. You know, he be, he be scared, man. He know we want to get on. Y'all, Hitmaker, what's My brother. <laughs> You, you know I'm like James St. Patrick's. You know ah! like, Yo, Hitmaker, let me tell you something, man. You position the camera to show your green eyes like perfectly. Yo, like, dog, yeah, you're a motherfucker. Let me tell nah. you something, man. Hey, yo. Yo, Hitmaker, you got to stop. Nah. Yo, Hitmaker, what do you want, man? What do you want in life? What do you want, like, you're very successful, you're young, successful, what do you want, man? What What do you want? I'm looking at it like how y'all looked at it, man. I got to be bigger than Irv Gotti. I got to be bigger than Dame. I got to be bigger than Ho. I got to be bigger than Fat Joe. I got to go crazy right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm looking at life like right now. Like, like hold on. Hold on. My brother. Like, I'm in, like, like. <laughs> You see the whole, I wake up like James St. Patrick. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 Top of the world. Top of the Yo. world. Do they see I mean, me? You know why? Because you got so many hits. Some people, they get hot, then they feel the vibe, and before they know it, the vibe is gone. Yeah. You have never done that. You in the studio every night. You work through COVID. You work through every, you will not it's stop. Joe, it's been five. Yo, I think the 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 start of our really run kind of was like um, the run run was like Chris Brown party. That was five years ago. It's been a five year run. <laughs> yeah, hit me. Shout hit out to Chris me. Brown. We probably have a single on the way. Like, shout out to how many Chris Brown singles? How many Chris Brown featured singles about to come out? Um, <laughs> Let me ask you a question: Who you been working with lately? I'm executive producing eight albums at once, Joe. Right now, like literally, like this is not like this is not this is not a cappuccino. It's not a cappuccino. I heard you say you was doing French's album. Oh, that's done. I don't even have to do anything more on French's album. Shout out to French is done. You seen him on a boat canoodling? <laughs> I seen him the with that Doja done. Cat. You know French, man. Shout out! Yeah, I don't want to say much. He will. Silent assassin. Um, she but well, she worked. She worked on the thing on something like that. Ah! that. Ah! Um, Jim Jones, his album is on the way. Um, Jeremiah, his album is on the way. Jeremiah, like I'm putting special energy. In, I'm putting a different type of vibe into Jeremiah. Well, Jeremiah is your go-to guy. The only reason I got him was because you got him for me. So yo, Jeremiah yo, is yo, like, tell him the story. They got tell, Joe, you got tell Jeremiah. Tell him the story. Yo, Joe, a joke for a moment. Tell him the story how Hands On You really happened. Oh, wow. So Hands On You, the video's out now, Family Ties. Um, we could tell him about the video, too. Uh, <laughs> so we get, we get the um, Boy Wonder. Boy Wonder comes shout out with his Wonder. beat, and he says, he says, big homie, shout out Boy Wonder. He says, big homie, I heard you retiring. With thus far, it's true. I haven't recorded nothing since Family Ties. Everybody trying to throw me, yo, come and feature this. No, right? So even Dre, he pissed. Everybody mad at me because I ain't in the studio. Eminem called me talking about, yo, Joe, you can't retire. Eminem. So now it's real out here, right? So I go yeah. boom. So he said, "Yo, you're gonna retire." I said, "Yeah." So he sent that track, that old, around the way, uh, LL Cool J. Nobody could clear that beat LL Cool J. Is insane. The beat is insane. But then I'm gonna keep it real with the people. It kind of sounded like if you don't know who, uh, who Boy One is, he does a lot of Drake shit. So it sounded like with my conversation to him, let's keep it real. Sounded like, yo, when you do it, I'm going to let Drake hear it. And I think, I th he didn't say that, but the conversation was like almost like Drake might get on this, right? It was, it was there. It was, it was, it was, it was like, right. It was that type of language coming from that guy, right? So 
I went in there hard. I started talking that shit on there. I sent it back immediately. So that when I sent it back, I was like, yo, um, that shit you was hinting to, is that really going to happen? Because I can't wait to hear the Drake vocals, right? Right. So he was like, yo, I haven't spoke to him, this and this. So I hit you up and I said, yo, listen. Drake's supposed to get on this song. No, no, no. I told you. Tell I him. Said, don't, don't play I, him. I said, yo, hit maker. Tell him how it maker. Tell him I, people I, how it happens. I Let said, no. I said, listen, Drake, I think Drake's supposed to get on this song. And could you get Jeremiah on the hook too? So I could maybe speed the process and maybe throw the battery in their back. So you mm. sent it back. You went and got Jeremiah. Now, for those who don't know, Jeremiah doesn't go to his own videos. His own <laughs> record label can't get him to work. Yeah, that that boy hit make him work with the change. You went with that studio and set it up in his house. And when he woke up, the shit was there. And you said, sit here, sing there. He sung there. You sent it back. And it was all done like in a matter of a day. So I had to turn in the album. So I couldn't play the, is Drake going to get on the song shit? So I said, yo, Dre, it was me and Dre's album. I said, Dre, spit your verse. Let's do it. Then last minute, home run, because I'm really serious about retiring. Wait, I mean, yo, that was Rich the Player? Like, no, that no. Was, that was no, 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 Rich, no, Rich the Barber. Listen, I got this. So I got me and Dre's on there, Jeremiah's on there. And last minute, because, you know, Bryson Tiller, he come from here. He come from this family tree. He used to sit on that sofa right there. So we never really work, work, work on a on a song like now. So I said, yo, Bryce, I'm about to retire. And he is even hard, slower than Jeremiah than anybody. He was like, for real, Joe, big homie? I said, yo, listen, I need you on the song, and I need it back tomorrow because we mixing and mastering. And the boy went in that studio. Kick this verse, and that's how we got hands on you. Amazing. Oh, my God. You've, Yo. done, you've done some things happen like that. You've had some shit happen like that, huh? Yo, the shit with Yes, that still is, like, one of the, fa like, my funniest, like, favorite, like, you're Joe McCarty. You hear the Yes story. So now, we had Yes. Yeah, we had try to, to put no blast. First and foremost, I pulled up real right. I pulled up in a Rolls Royce. You know what I'm saying? I hopped yo, out. You always out. pull up right, man. You like yo, yo, hit maker. <laughs> Ain't nobody confused. You rich, yeah. big yeah, rich. Yeah. You went on Breakfast Club. You said I was. Yo, one I, thing I know. Let me tell you something. The other day, Cardi B, uh, posted I'm, like I'm listening. Cardi yeah. B posted like three Birkin bags in a row. Not right. only Birkin bags. Like exclusive shit you just can't get, right? So then I, right. I, I sat back for a sec. I said, man, she doing good. But then I thought about it. She got that number one song out right now, that WAP. So when yeah. you got a number one out at the time, yeah. you definitely could do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. And so and so with you, you've had so many number ones and so many hits over the last five years. <laughs> Whenever you do something, I don't, ain't it sad that we come from nothing and then when you flex, people don't appreciate the flex? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to do a life flex real quick. Yo, it makes yo, you crazy, bro. Yeah, they don't got Not that. Ain't gonna lie to you. you know what I'm saying? The pristine, all type of. Yo, pristine jewelers, you better believe it. He I goes like them. this. Let me tell you something. I turn around, I go on. Um, sometimes I wear an outfit that I think is like out of control. And then I get like minimal likes. And I'll be like, yo, <laughs> is the such thing you too fly? Cause. Yes. And these people hate yes. us. Like, because I give it up. When I see some fly, I'm like, oh, shit. Right? I, yo, I, hit the, I hit the like quick. Joe, Joe, but look, look. This is what I realized. The women, that's the fly ones, they won't, they're want. they not going to like your shit. They're just going to take notice. And then you, when, when you cross paths with them, they'll be like, yo. they'll acknowledge, yo. That like, is a fact. Do the, 
I seen you do the Louis off the you dig, you dig with the prestine. Like it was the real chandelier. It wasn't it wasn't a I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something, hit maker for my birthday. Khaled, my brother. He he, he nah, got the hold dick. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I see, see that, that TS. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that ice. Yo, hit maker. So Khaled says, yo, I want to take you and your family to Turks with my family for your birthday. I said, all right, fuck it, let's go. He got right. I ain't gonna lie. It's the nicest private plane I ever seen. There's a 650 glow. Did Some he pay the 25000 for the game, too? Listen, I'm, I'm coming. On, like, I, I, I'm, on, I'm on him. <laughs> Listen, I turn around, and I come up in there with the fucking the DR hoodie with the DR sneaker, the shorts with the suitcase DR. Like, right. you know, I'm doing right. too much. <laughs> but I'm in there like, I'm starting on that shit, like, yo, right. like, come on, right. man, y'all gotta stop, and then when you look at these guys that make, and I don't want to disrespect my era, because these guys, I they look them. wrinkled in the face, they're not looking beautiful, like, they them. don't, they don't, they look, do you see the skin regimen, these guys look good to me, let's not, let's not, yo, right now. my but God, yo, I just want to, I, I want people from my era to look at me and be like, yo, Dan, that's one of our guys from my era, who, because I'm I'm not going to lie to you. I pull up on the young boys, Cullen and Doubt, Waldorf <laughs> Astoria, a milli to the wrist. Hey, like, yo, yo, I'm you're representing the You're disrespectful. Whole, yo, you whole ever heard? Era. You're disrespectful. You're disrespectful. Yeah, I got to, though. I'm going to do it till, till it's over. And, you know, sometimes. This is the, this, this the rubber band. Why do you have the, the why do you have the, the why? Why? I'm going to tell you some crazy shit where you got lucky at. You the only guy ain't chip in. So my wife, for my birthday, she put some guap down on the watch wow. and had all my friends chip in. So shout out everybody. Timberland, this one, that. Everybody threw it in the pot. And I got the big shit. Pristine no, no, no. gave me the... I'm that's sending fucking you a, no, I'm sending you, Yo, Christmas, I'm sending you a big <laughs> present. Yo, so this, this was a present. Is, I need Dre a favor. I need a favor from you. Whatever you need, you know I got you. Nori, I did drink champs. It can't come out. It can't. You, you know, no, 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 lie. no. You it should can't. have called me behind the scenes for no, that one. Yeah, no, it can't come out. Let it go. It can't come it out. Can't. No, I, I want to say it live. It can't come out. And this is a brother to brother. I promise you. I love you. You should stop, stop. You should have told me that behind the scenes because now you, 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 you made everybody in the world want to see this shit now. It's a, no, I know it gotta be edited. No, let me talk to him. I'll talk to him. But oh, yeah, yeah, change the subject. Listen, that's a behind the scenes. That's why you No. you're supposed to hit me on the backbone like yo, crack. Yo, talk to our brother. You fucked up. You was drinking too much, Tiger Bong, and all that. And you talked about some shit you wasn't supposed to. <laughs> Don't Nori gets me in all kind of beef. Yo, that drink champs. Gets me in all tiger, kind tiger, of tiger beef. Bomb, tiger bomb. <laughs> Yo, that nigga get you nice. Nah, Nori get you nice. Yo, listen. Let me tell you something, my brother. I appreciate you. No, uh, I, like I salute you. you. Thank you. I thank you for uh, not only being my friend, but working with me, giving me incredible music. If Family Ties is my last album, you made it, and you made it great. Yeah, all the singles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You see, that's why Nori shit can't come out. Bye bye, Hitmaker. Hitmaker <laughs> St. Patrick. We love you, baby. Stay <laughs> up. He got crazy, but he got all the hits. He got all the hits. The man ain't lying. The man ain't lying. He got all the hits. Hitmaker St. Patrick. Seen that view? That's what I'm talking about. The big, big show, that's what I'm talking about. Being successful. Tonight, I wasn't imagining no big guests or nothing like that. Tonight, I was going to talk real shit with y'all. And if you in for some real shit, then we here. We at the right spot. Sometimes people get in the way of themselves. Do me a favor. 
Don't get in the way of your own success. Don't get in the way of your own success. And people do that sometimes. Sometimes you want to hurt. You want to help somebody. You want to help somebody and you can't even help them. And you're there telling them, please, let me help you. But they get in the way of their own success. Now, I was writing down a bunch of shit. Today, I was deep. You see me bumping my Patty LaBelle. Shout out to Steve LaBelle. You see me pumping my back. Whenever I feel uh, a little bit down, I go into my Patty LaBelle, my Anita Baker. You know, it just it reminds me of my best friend, Tom Montana. Rest in peace. And I just try to calm down and figure out life. But I was jotting down some things. For one, is it me? Or is it that the president is clout chasing Corona? Is it me? Or is it that the president is clout chasing Corona? I'm not going to lie to you guys. Shout out Ruben Diaz. Tomorrow, Ruben, we're doing the Puerto Rico I I issue. But I'm not going to lie to you. I prayed for the first family. And I don't fuck with Trump. But I don't wish nobody bad. And I believe in karma. And when you wish people bad, it will come back. But I don't even know if this guy got corona. Now, people I know who have corona can't even, I'm talking about tough guys, can't even get up from their bed to the bathroom. Can't even, this guy in two days, he's waving around. Today he came out, ripped the mask off and said, come on, man. Come on. So now he beat Corona. But we're not listening. We're not hearing no more about the 750 in taxes. We're not hearing about the white supremacists. We're not hearing that Joe Biden's son used to get high and that junkies are this and that. Yo, bro. This guy. Yo, they, they did a close-up on Trump when he was doing this. Yeah. And he's coughing and swallowing it. <laughs> nah. You know, Yo, the man got, if you notice, for the first two days, he didn't have the suntan. Now when he got to the White House, he had the suntan. Hey, God bless. All I'm saying is, is it me? Or if this was hip hop, we would be, we would be saying he's clout chasing Corona. Now, I don't know nobody else who beat Corona in three days. I also don't know nobody else who took experimental shit that obviously already works with 30 of the best doctors you ever seen with sweets and shit like that. So if you want to talk about privilege, man, and so I missed you guys. And uh, I seen LL Cool J put up a quote. He says, sometimes the things that make you great are the same things people hate you for. The things that make you great are the same things people hate you for. Now, you know, y'all all know about hate. Y'all all know about, we all got haters. In fact, we say if you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. If you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. And so people be mad at themselves because they chose to live a mediocre life. Listen. Listen. People be mad at themselves because they chose to live a mediocre life. And so they mad at you because you're successful. They mad at you because you're trying to get better. Or it comes a time when you come like me from the hood. I have this problem. And I'm not a punk, guys. I'm, I can't be punked. I can't be scared. I can't be... I, I, none of it. 
what Pristine said. He said, I love the hate. It makes me get more money. Fucking right. That's what fuels me. When people sleep on me, they say, Fat Joe ain't a great rapper. He's over this, that. That's when I give him another hit. And so, damn, you fucked up my train of thought, Pristine. Um, so, like, with the same thing you're great for is the same thing they hate you for. And this is a fact. And sometimes when you're from the hood like me and you're trying to, it's one thing, let's keep it real. We've been keeping it real. Ever since we wore 6X white tees and fucking baggy jeans and Tim's up to the knee. Yo, we kept it real. Every time Fat Joe ain't the type of rapper and we're trying to keep it positive, but I'm not the type of rapper that if shit jump off, I push my friends in front of me and I run out the back door. No, Fat Joe, you've seen it in every angle, in every city in the U.S. Every time. But, bro, if I'm trying to grow and elevate, don't you want to see me win and clean my face up and go another direction to where maybe I could turn around and throw you the light preserver and help you? We have to stop fearing our family members and our friends becoming successful or getting bigger because you could you feel like, oh shit, he's gonna blow up to a point where we ain't gonna yo bro. Trust that man or that woman if you know their their their, their, their life story, if you know their reputation, if they're good people, they're good people. I got another one. I'm just thinking random shit. Random shit that I was just jotting down. Had a rough day today. Really, I didn't. I made money. I seen my mother and father, hung out. You know, I'm, I had actually a blessed day. Any day on the ground and you got health is the most blessed day. Because you could be one of these guys with $10 billion, mad as hell, no love, no friends, and die. You can't even take the $10 billion with you. Health is wealth. Without wealth, without health, there's no wealth. Okay. Hustlers. Trappers, drug dealers, scammers, whatever the fuck you do. Whatever you do, please don't emulate the rappers. I am legit. These rappers are legit. So when these rappers are out here flossing and Bentleys and all that and doing all that, be wise. Be wise, because you, my friend, let me give you the biggest game. Oh, they're going to be mad at me for this. Oh, you in the club. You popping 10,000 bottles. You throwing the most money at the, at the chicks. There's a guy sitting in there. Let me give him an even bummy drink, a sex on the beach, because he don't even get paid that much. And he's watching you. And when you go outside, you're in the Ferrari. He writes down the license plate. Now, when he goes, does his investigation, I'm talking about an undercover cop. You don't know that. Might even have a tattoo on his face. You don't know. When he goes outside, he takes your license plate. He says, man, this guy never had a fucking job in his life. Did he catch a lawsuit? Is he a basketball player? If you're on the ground and you're a hustler, a trapper, a scammer, don't show no money like this. You're going to jail. And so I see these guys sometimes and I love them and I'm happy for them. And I know everybody. I know we all grew up fucked up. 
We all grew up poor. And we can't wait to, to floss. You've been waiting your whole life to floss. You couldn't get that girl if you ain't floss. So the minute you get her, you out here. But you know what happens to these guys? They have an eight-month run. If the feds are good to you, they'll stay watching you for two years. Now you have 30 to 40 years in jail. Was that worth it? Two years of flossing. Was that worth it? Wow, Cherry Pepsi. We love it. Tomorrow night, Revolt TV, 10 p.m. Eastern. Shout out to Diddy. Um, at the end of the day, a hustler's a hustler. You market, you promote, you take risk. Take your energy into a legit business. If you fight for it the way you fought for the block, you will be successful. You will be successful. Diet Pepsi, Dre, you crazy. You got that, right? This ain't rocket scientists. This ain't, listen to me. No, Wild Cherry Pepsi, brother. We killing this up. Ever since I did Wild Cherry Pepsi Fridays, the sales have been through the roof. Guess where? Atlanta, South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida. For some reason, the South is killing this shit. Wild Cherry Pepsi. And so, Rock, forget about everybody. I did the big, big show on, on Revolt. Pub Daddy got Comcast. He's been trying to get Comcast for five years. I'm woke. I'm woke. Get in the way of yourself. Shout out to my brother, Pistol Pete, Dog in the Yard. My most favorite show when I have time to watch on YouTube. Dog in the Yard. Regular people, real people tell their life story of them incarcerated. Some of the most amazing shit I've ever heard in my life. And so I'm going to talk to him about this because I'm going to do Dog in the Yard right after this. Um, It's a lot of pressure that comes with success. A lot of pressure that comes with success. So you got a guy like Fat Joe. I got the same number for 20 years. Every day I say I got to change my number. The phone rings. A nephew from somewhere, he needs a coat. This one, that. This one, that. These are all people I know for 100 years, but I can't, I got to pick up. I got to. And then without, I'm having a great time. I'm making money, guys. My family's great. I'm having a great time. And it's these people who I got to pick up the phone for and get stressed the fuck out. So it's pressure being successful. And now what happens is sometimes... I'm going to ask Pistol Pete because he knows more about this jail shit than me. But sometimes I be thinking some of these guys want to go to jail, right? Because we talking about jail reform and, and, and reforming justice and hit maker. Some of these people, I be thinking that they like, you know, now you out of jail. When you're in jail, your job is to work out be safe, and be the best spades player in the world. Now you out, you got your three kids, you got to learn to be a father, you got to work if you want to be legit. And that, that money ain't like it used to be when you was hustling or scamming. So you got to go through all those issues. A lot of people use drugs. A lot of people hide behind the liquor. A lot of people, because they're in a state of depression, because they say, damn, before I went to jail, I had this. And now I ain't got it when I'm out here. Me, I never did that. I understand 
that you can win and lose. I've been rich. I've been broke. I've been broke. I've been rich. I've been broke. Who gives a fuck? All I know is I never give up. I never give up. You see the fight in me. I never give up. And so I say, you know what? The money going to come. The money going to come. But I got to stay healthy, first of all. And number two is I got to keep working and expanding and try to do different, different things to see what's going to crack, what's going to go. Yeah, I count my blessings. I'm trying to give you game. Because when I was coming up, I used to ask myself all the time, why the executives, why guys who came in front of me never gave me game? This whole show has always been just giving you game, bro. I don't care. If you're successful, I'm successful. If I help a young black kid or a young Latino get rich or give him game so he can change his life, that's one black or Latino that ain't sticking up my mother at the gas station. I don't give a fuck. I get my own money, guys. This pressure with success. I believe a lot of our friends, a lot of these guys give up and they can't be parents and they get to, and another thing. I've broken up with baby's mamas before. I'm going to be honest. Let me, where, where's that shit at? Man, hold up. Let me, I got one for you. Are we, y'all, y'all want real talk? Put the fire signs. If not, fuck it. I'll dumb it out. If y'all want real talk, put fire signs. If not, I'll dumb it out. I'm giving you game. These guys, so-called competitions or urban, uh, them guys don't even know shit. When you go to a drug program, nine times out of 10, the guy who's giving you the, the, the telling you to stay in a rehab is a guy who used drugs. I never used drugs, but he been in there. He been in the crack house. He been crazy. He, been, he came out of that shit, and now he's telling you how to come out. So what I do is I'm trying to tell you shit from experience. Take it, you don't. I'm doing just fine. Fucking president is clout chasing Corona. He's trending number six on Twitter. Of course he's trending number six. Stand back and stand by. But I'll, I'll continue. Trump is a national disgrace. Trending <laughs> stop, number, stop. No, no, it's number six trending. Let me tell you something I always say. Don't worry about what people think about you. Don't worry what they say about you. Because no one pays your bills. You get it? No one pays your bills. I'll say something might embarrass my daughter. My daughter used to go to Catholic school. I come up in there with my wife. I'm Joe Crack looking like hip hop, whatever. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a real parent. I take care of mine. I'm the real deal. And so I used to come up in there and they would be looking at me like, Good old church people judging me, looking at me like. And it was around the time I caught the case. So I really, they was looking at me like I was a piece of shit. But over the years went on, I seen these, these couples who love each other and they all got divorced. They all left each other. And now, I don't know if you should be with someone if you're miserable. 
Well, by the way, they all got divorced. They all got divorced. The people used to look at me like I was less holier, less holier. They all, you know, split their family up. Everybody went. They did their thing. Guys went with the younger chicks. They did whatever the case. There's always symptoms or whatever the case may be. But should you live in a house if you're miserable or should you stay for the kids? This is big. I see people all the time, they won't admit it, but they look miserable And somehow they stay for the kids. Now, divorce and splitting up families, it does affect the kids. Too many men act like, I understand when I was young, I didn't know. Too many people act like they don't know. Like, no, you know, we'll get along. We'll meet the new mother, stepmother, the this. Nah, bro. It affects the kids. Now, if you're miserable, if you can't stand him, or she can't stand you. Should you stay together for the kid? As I sip a wild cherry Pepsi. Elsie Pacheco, what's up? And so I can't answer that for you. Either way, it affects the kids. That's true. But I see, wait till they're 18 years old. I see a lot of people do that. What you think, Dre? Would you be miserable <laughs> where you can't fucking stand this chick, but your kids is seven, eight? Would you wait till they got older? Or would you just leave? Man, that's a good question, man. I'll probably wait, man, because I know how important it is as a child to have both parents in their life. You know what I'm saying? You will wait? You know why I'd wait? Because, you know, I got a daughter, so I can't trust no other grown man around my daughter unless it's me. <laughs> These are the things we have to think about before making those decisions. Man. I can't. That's what I say. Listen, to any terror squad or friend of Fat Joe's wife that's watching, I am and have always been your greatest ally. I know your husband might have lied to you and said, I'm in the studio with Joe and you found out he wasn't, so Joe's a piece of shit. No, I didn't even know they did that to you. But whenever a friend of mine is somebody's going to break up, I am the first one to encourage family staying together. Me, I go on the record saying that. But now, I sit down. I sit down and say, listen, my brother. sure you want to break up? You sure you want to leave her? Now, if you go to club live and she's standing on the couch with a butt, because all my, all my guys' wives are bad anyway. Like, they're bad. Like, they, you know, bad. Like, fly bad chicks. You sure you want to go on that couch and see her with some football players? <laughs> You sure you want to leave your daughter and your wife might fall in love or your ex-wife might fall in love with some dude that want to play uh, PK25? What's the shit? PS, PS5? To smoke blunts in front of your kid and smack your kid and kick them in the ass while they're walking by? No, that happens. Baby boy is real. 
that happens. Your wife meets the wrong guy. She falls in love. He's in there with his whole crew. Simple. Somebody says, Joe, let's talk about tagger artists. Invest in yourself. Invest in your future. Invest in your career. I invest in mine all the time. I am an independent artist. And so I don't want to disrespect nobody. So when you see people say support black owned, support Latino owned, if your face is black and Latino in the front, but in the back, somebody else collecting the money in the cash register, somebody else is the boss, it's not black owned, Latino owned. This is black and Latino owned. And so I pay for my own career. And times when I wasn't doing so good, I would go on a whole tour in Europe. Take all of yourself Linda your official says it's worse if you fight in the house all this shit is fucked up I'm giving you some shit that I randomly put down I can't give you the app I'm not God bro being true to yourself this is a hard one This is a hard one, guys. I'm, I'm going to give you a hard one. For instance, is it hard to be yourself? For instance, I know friends, I have friends who are obviously gay, but won't come out to not upset their parents and their family. And so... Is it hard to be yourself? And you see that all the time. Should they be true to themselves? Or should they protect their family's feelings? And so, it's freezing up? Nah, it's not freezing up. So do you stay true to yourself? Or if your mother, your father don't understand that you might be gay? But I mean, like, I know girls that are like, and guys that... And so... And so, you got to ask yourself, what are you going to do? I thought of some shit today. yourself I'm telling you the truth that's hard if you just look at hip hop if you just look at uh, actresses and, and, and actors and you know this guy's gay but I know a guy in the music industry, uh, and he talks about it, so I can just, but I know a guy, I won't say his name, but I've known him for years, great guy, great, great guy, phenomenal guy. 
And his brother was a tough guy. You know, like a real tough guy that everybody respected. And so his brother died. God bless him, rest in peace. And then he went back. And he went back to his town. And he came out the closet and let him know he's gay and told his mother and father and all that. And it's just crazy because I didn't know he was gay either. But he respected his brother, he said. And because his brother was a real dude, he didn't want to bring that type of look on his brother. Oh, you can't hear me right now? And they always do this every time. Can't hear me? It's freezing. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, put the fire signs. If no, I'll start it again. Okay. Okay. Don't be scared to talk about the heat, bro. It's okay. Miami Heat look good. They won a game. Miami Heat did good. I, I look clear to you because they saying I'm blurry. They can't be. Are they, or are they fucking with me? Um, none of these guys are as authentic or as real as me. You putting all these names. It's, these guys are nothing. They never ran the streets like me. They never put hit, hits out the park like me. Rejoin as he says. All right, I'm I'm gonna start it again. We back, just like that. So people were saying you can't hear me. I got one for that ass. This one. This one. Miami Heat got to win. Dre won't stop. Yeah, yeah, Miami yeah. Heat got to win. They looked amazing. I actually love the Miami Heat. They just can't beat LeBron James four games. I'm sorry. You'll see tomorrow what I mean. God bless him. Steve Stowe, your beauty. Everybody in the Miami Heat, Pat Riley, your beauty. The big show. So I got one for the ass. I got one for that ass. This is a serious one. Like this one might get me thrown off of Instagram. Right. But today, it seemed like whenever I talk that real shit, we get delays, we get a problem, we get a... Why we can't talk real shit on here? Diamond D, thank you for saving my life. Diamond D, D-I-T-C, Dre bodied that record you it, sent them. It, I just sent it yesterday. You got it back. You got it already? No, I sent it to him yesterday. He don't know. Oh, he sent it to you. This is one for that ass. Religious leaders. <laughs> Religious leaders. Leaders, if you want me to continue this question or this statement or whatever, let me see fire signs. Matter of fact, give me the prayers. Give me the prayers. The prayer ones. If you want me to finish this, I'll turn this shit off. I will turn this shit off. If you want to hear this one, put the prayers. Who? He took the mask off. He's, this man is gasping for breath. Elite, somebody said elite higher ups are watching, and I never really cared about those guys, guys. Higher ups and elites, I kiss no ass, guys. If you knew me, you wouldn't even tell me that. I know they're all watching. It's the greatest entertainment on earth. The big, big show. You get this shit for free every day, seven months straight. You've been getting this shit for free. Real shit. Nobody gonna talk to you like that. 
Not a made man like me. This is a big one. Religious leaders. Now. Religious leaders. Who own churches in the hood. Poor neighborhoods. Yet they live in mansions. And drive Bentleys. I've even been to a church that had an ATM machine in the middle. I beyond believe in God. I tell you this every day. I tell you to pray. I believe in everybody having their own relationship with God. Everybody. So you telling me because the guy's in the jail cell and he's praying to God? Because he ain't at a church? He doesn't get to talk to God? Well, you say the Pope. You say I'm saying everybody. Forget the Pope. I just want to know. Because sometimes when I did go to church or I go to church and I've been in churches or religious things, let's just say in general. Where they wouldn't even let you out the place. It felt like we're trying to raise $3,000. We need a thousand more. And they won't even let you go till they make that quota. God is everywhere. God said the body is the body of Christ. Has anybody ever felt uh, kind of weird? Like in the church where they start that and I believe these guys love God. I believe they preaching the word of God. Good versus evil all day. I do. I do believe that. But I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, when, you know. You have a church in the middle of a hood that's fuck. It looks abandoned. It's horrible. And then you invite somebody to your house and the church people are cleaning everything in the house they, they, for free because they love you. Or is it, because I've heard people in the past, I've always run my business, um, say, I want my pastor or I want my whatever to live like that or look like that. I don't want to feel like, and I'll go to church tomorrow. I love church. I love church people. I love the word of God. I love a great pastor or, or someone. I love it. But. I'll leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that. Because what I say is. I'm a sinner. A well known one. But even Jesus was killed by police. And so I know who I am. I try to be correct. I try to be righteous. I try to help people. I try to give back. I try to do as much as I can. But, and I never judge. This is just another one of these questions that came out today. I never ever judge. Right? And so, is it right? Is it wrong? I don't know what to tell you. 
I used to be cool with a pastor one time. I used to be real cool with a pastor. Well, he says, Joe, you know what? The church ain't doing go too good. Uh, could you write me a check for uh, $4,000? It'll really help the church right now. I went in my back pocket. I pulled a check out. And I said, all right, pastor. I'm going to give you the four grand because I love your church and your people. Don't ever ask me for shit again. <laughs> and I gave him the check. <laughs> and so the thing I say is. Right, let's say Mace. Let's say Mace. We're all sinners. Mace gave himself the church. Now, God ain't something you play with. So when he gave himself the church, I figure, all right, God bless him. Nobody could be God. Nobody could be God. I had a DJ, my DJ, DJ Semitic, out there in Atlanta. He told me one day, he was my favorite DJ. He said, Joe, I found God. I got to leave the, the, the crew to go to church. No. I couldn't argue with him. Really? Yeah, DJ Semitic. I, I love him. Him and his family, they're in church. So I said, I love you. I cannot fight God for nothing. God bless you. And we're still brothers to this day. So now, so now, my thing is, don't play with God, man. If you say you're in God, so Mace Wayne went into church and then he came back out. He came out of retirement and started rapping gangster again. I don't know. So if you go on church and you become a pastor and you're around church and you this and that and then come back for the rap, and I'm really scared of shit like that. So all I can say is, good old church people, I know you watch me too, because I preach God on here. I preach family. I preach God. I preach inclusion. I preach everything together, family. So I know you watch me. That's what the good Lord asked me to talk about today. Okay, guys? So whoever it hit, it hit. Parenting. Parenting is so hard. We were just kids yesterday. And so it's no one way or correct way to be a parent. Your kids are growing up. You're trying to teach them the right thing. You're trying not to fight in front of your your kids, you're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to work. You're trying to make them happy. You want to give them everything you can. Put them in the best school. This, 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 this. But who knows what's right and what's wrong? And so this is a job that you're in training, but you're learning as you're going along. There is no right or wrong solution to parenting. And so sometimes we get it right, sometimes we get it wrong. And we it, and if you're trying to look, if you're from the South Bronx or Compton, and you're trying to look at one of these families on TV and think that that's reflect is a reflection of your family, no way. Even the good shows like Power, that ain't real. I've never met a Mary J. Blige that killed like that. I don't know what they, even the good shit. So it doesn't really reflect your family. So we can't learn, we can't watch Family Ties or, or uh, Three's Company or one of these shits and really think we learning something. Everything. Oh, yeah, this is good. I'm, 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 it's almost over, God. Everything in moderation. Moderation means a little bit at a time. 
You could try okay, stuff okay. or do whatever. I'm in it right now. A little bit at a time. And so, this is good. Drinking in moderation. So if you drink, you like to get drink, you stressed out, you whatever the hell is the case, right? You got to drink in moderation. If you drink too much, and sometimes we socially drink, but if we socially drink every Drink. You should drink. If that's what makes you happy, great. In moderation. Food. That's me. I'm addicted to food. You remember the early Fat Joe. I was like three times, literally three. I might have lost 200 pounds. And I'm still not healthy like I want to be. I need to be more healthy. So I have to eat things in moderation. And sometimes I slip. I'm like a crack addict. I drive past a McDonald's. I see the sign. I fucking think Chicken McNuggets are break dancing around me. I might want it. I have an addiction called food. Now food kills more people than guns, cops, anything. It's not black on black crime. It's fat on fat crime. Diabetes, hypertension. The reason why black and brown people are going out and dying to this COVID is because we got all these underlying conditions. Underlying conditions mean in illnesses from eating too much shit. So I have to control my. So I would love to be in Matarano's more, but I know he's going to give me too much food. Lovey's, if you're watching, I love you. But when I go to Lovey's on Sunday, they give me too much food. And I love the food. I'm not going to stop eating the food. So I have to learn how to eat in moderation. <laughs> ah! Yo, yo, come here. You know I'm on my... Come here, come here, come here, brother. Yo, yo, we got a surprise guest who snuck in on a looking skinny as hell, man. And we're addicted to food. We're addicted to sneakers. I know you got a sneaker. You got I, the sneaker problem. You got I a got a big problem. sneaker problem. You, got you call might be one of the causes from a jewel problem, the TS piece. Yeah, the jewelry is a problem for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not really is, though. Nigga, I'm telling no, you. I, I'm telling you. I hope they know we ain't joking, nigga. We ain't. No, they know. We don't need niggas just to log on. Nigga. Ah! We don't follow, nigga. Nah, Yo, listen. It's the, it's the truth. Niggas Even got... I told them everything in moderation, but I said in food, I got to be in moderation because I eat too much. I said when I drive past McDonald's, the chicken McNuggets, like break dance, like shit be like, yo, Joey, eat me. <laughs> no, I'm saying? That's how we grow It's up. hard. The number ones with the chocolate sundae or the caramel sundae. Ah! That's, that's how we grew up. We grew up on that. I'm going to keep it real. Rose. And it, it'll never change. You know, I told just do it our way, drinking, but it'll never change. We're not mad at nobody drinking, but they should drink in moderation. Of course, always drink. We want you can drink what drink in moderation. Your moderation. <laughs> I don't drink seven. Nah. That's one of my big secrets. I used to drink too many sodas. Seven Dr. Peppers on the average a day. Seven. You got off that? No more sodas. Shout out to Wild Cherry Pepsi. They're a sponsor of ours. <laughs> Yo. <laughs>
Listen, I'm about to go. Drugs in moderation. One time for the snorters. <laughs> oh my! You gotta shout out the snorters, the bumpers, the, the snorters, the bumpers, the one liners. Yeah. You know when I moved down here, at Ross, right? I never knew that people smoke bunk. I, I, I never. Yeah. No, I'm in the club. I'm yeah, smelling bunk. crack. I, sm yeah, yeah, yeah. I sold plenty crack yeah, in my yeah. life. I'm in the club, popping the flyest club in Miami, and I'm smelling crack in the air. And then I thought, no, I I'm swear gonna, to God. I'm going to be honest. No, I'm going to swear to it, we, God. We're not going to call it crack. It ain't crack. No, 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 no. Okay. We ain't gonna, nah, it's we ain't bunk? Gonna it. yeah, what it's, is it? It's bunk, which which unfortunately is what in the <laughs> early 80s they, they referred to as freebasing. Anytime you put flame to cocaine, that's what they referred to that. But I'm going to tell you out something. Out here in Miami, what niggas was doing, niggas was getting so much money. That's when coke for that early wave of niggas was the shit. Niggas would take a bump, then they'll put a little coke on their weed, which was their way of expressing them getting, you know, living the Flyer. extravagant they life. Even, they're living That's even better, like Rich Pryor. And Richard it, Pryor was yeah, smoking yeah, that shit yeah. like it was some fly shit. And then, and then when it, you know, when it came to our generation, we, you know, we eased away from it. You know, it's a few niggas no, stayed solid. <laughs> Miami niggas that stayed <laughs> solid still smoke bump. You can smell yeah. that shit. No, that listen. shit flow. Oh that shit God. flow through the alley of COVID, nigga. I'm from New York. I'm nah, sitting in the nah, crack. Oh, shit, shit like smell crack like crack. bunk. Like, yeah. I don't want to call it crack, but it's bunk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yo, but I'm in the sit. Yo, listen. Hey, I'm say silent. Hey, yo, bro. I'm in the middle of the crowd. Still. I'm hearing all the boom. Yeah. I'm smelling this shit. I said, yo. I told. I pulled Khaled over one time. I said, yo, Khaled, let me ask you something. Yo, I'm smelling crack in the motherfucking <laughs> air, man. And Cali like, no, 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 that's not crack. No, they cocaine and, and crack. this and this and that. And I'm not, talking about rich, no, no, rich, no, niggas. rich yeah, niggas. Rich niggas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paid yeah, dudes, yeah, not niggas. bums. Nah, niggas in Benzes. Niggas smoking in the five SEL diesels. That's who the niggas was doing it. Yeah. Oh, God. Rick Ross in the building. Dougie Fresh in the building. Hit maker in the building. Tell Ross, put you on one. That's Hitmaker. Hitmaker, you know, he asked you, man. He that's said, my guy. I don't know. Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> oh, I was going to say. He said, you got, <laughs> he said you got fire with him, not the bar. Oh, not the bar. I was going to say, I never let Craig smoke. I know his name. Yeah! I know it's Joey Craig. I never smoked crack in my life. Let me tell you something. Home, I went to Wendy Williams, and I sat there, and I was talking about my era, my generation. I was like, yeah, we were smoking crack. We was there. They made so much memes. Like, they thought I was saying I was smoking crack. I never smoked crack in my life. No, I'm no. saying my era was smoking that shit. Right, Woolers right. and in the... All right. Right, right. Listen, guys. I'm about to get out of here, but I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to tell you something that really got me fucked up. Shout out to Rasheed mm -hmm. Wallace on the check-in. Uh, this is the last right. thing that got me really fucked up. Yesterday was a very, very legendary day for me. I taught my daughter how to drive. Congratulations. And she, she gonna drive in the Rolls Royce. That means any of you guys get lucky in five, ten years, you better come pick up in the Rolls Royce. So I taught her how to die. Let me tell you the crazy shit. I taught my daughter how to drive. Now, you know, I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm teaching her everything correct. So I'm giving her this speech to, to, to make the left turn, make the right signal, stop, observe all mirrors, put the, the most professional shit you could do. So I told her, listen, if you ever, which is true, if you ever get caught in an accident, you any kind of accident, even if you're wrong, if you're wrong, don't leave. Don't. If you're wrong. Great advice. Don't leave. So I'm telling my daughter, if you're wrong. Don't leave, no matter what kind of accident. I don't care what it is. For what it ain't fair, hit and run, whatever the case may be. Don't leave. Wait for the cops to come, whatever. After we teach my daughter how to drive. This is some real shit, Ross. I'm glad you're here. You're my brother. I love you. I take my daughter to get an ice cream on Lincoln Road to celebrate that she, she was driving for like a whole hour, right? I took her to Key Biscayne, the little parking lots back there. So I go, boom. We get the ice cream. We get in the truck. And I go forward. 
I run over a mini motorcycle. Like, you seen these motorcycles they driving now? The little, little shits, you yeah. can't see it on the truck. Like so I go, ah, she says, it's a motorcycle. I'm like, ah. It's the first accident I ever had in my life, Ross. I took courage. I took great pride in telling everybody, yo, I'm the safest driver. I'm the best in the world. I never crashed in my life. I was so mentally screwed. You know what I had to do to myself yesterday? I crashed and it was... Tons of white people out there. You know them cameras is Lincoln Road. Four o'clock in the afternoon. Fat Joe is not leaving the scene of the crime. I had to call 911 on myself. I've never done this shit. I've been running from the police so long. I 911. Hey, what's it? Joseph Carter Jr. Hey, sir, what's going on? I hit a motorcycle. Is everybody okay? My license number. I'm at North Michigan. Can you? We're sending an officer there now. Yo, I was so stressed. I never did this shit in my life. The dude come. The cop come. It was like a miracle. Shout out my man, Roly Exclusive Motors. Roly pulls up in a Ferrari. Joe, what's going on? So when the guy comes, the guy comes, Ross. I'm going to tell you a true story. If you there, I don't know your name, but this is a true story. He's caught Diesel, a Spanish kid. Diesel, though. Like, brolic. Like, look like an MMA. Shots. Ye shots, ye uh, creatine on. Uh, he did this thing. He's yoked up. Yo, yo, real. Yo, I'm telling y'all. So he pull, He comes up. He got the mask on. He comes up. He goes, yo, he looks at the guy. He said, You fat Joe? I said, Yeah, I'm fat Joe. He said, Oh, shit. He said, Oh, shit. I'm the biggest. Yo, I'm a. I'm a fat Joe fan. Oh my God, man. But you know when somebody crashes shit, you you on another level yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, damn. So I was like, what's wrong, my man? I said, I, I told him off rip, I'll pay for anything. I'll buy you a new one if I have to. Don't worry, I'll pay for it. He said, I just want to get it on with whoever hit my car. Oh my. Well, you fat Joe, I love you. I would never disrespect. No, no, I'm not that. But if it was anybody else, I would love to fight him right now. I said, yo, Ross, I'm looking at him, I'm like this. My daughter's there. I'm looking at him, I'm like, I'm like, yo, my brother, you know, this. He's like, no, Fat Joe, no disrespect. You Joey Crack. I love you. I'm Latino. I'm from New York. This is, whoa, I wish it was somebody else. <laughs> so we there. Roly happened to just drive by in the Ferrari, and Roly owns the collision. He said, bro, Fat Joe is the man. Don't worry. He pay for anything. He told you he paid, he pay. Don't worry with that. So we, we worked it out. I rushed home. I felt like it was bad luck. I was so mad at myself. It's the first time I ever had an accident in my life in front of my daughter. And last night I couldn't sleep. And then I thought about it. I said, you know what? <clears throat> it's only going to cost me a couple of dollars. The police ain't right up nothing. It don't go on my record. And guess what? God taught my daughter and me a lesson in front of each other. Because I have to lead from example. So I'm kicking to her all that shit. You crash, you stay. You crash, you stay. I said, damn, man. I got off cheap. Because God gave my daughter the lesson in the spot. I've been stressed out to, to, to today, too. These guys are, yeah, 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 I got a classic story today. Listen, put God first. Trust in God. Say no to boom. <laughs> Say no to boom. Yeah. Please don't. Hey, Dougie Fresh, he said, wow, unbelievable. Doug, I love you, but it was God's lesson. A lot of times what stuff happened to us and you wonder why, he's only preparing you for the next thing to happen. Peace, y'all. Yo, Rob.